Hello YouTube and welcome back to a rather relaxing episode of Explain That Game where we showcase a game's features and help you decide if it's worth your money. Uh, today we're looking at Dear Esther, not the mod but the retail game. I'll put a link to the mod version in the description below if I remember. Um, this is a mod for Half-Life 2 I believe or just Source Engine. Uh, this is $6.99 on Steam, uh, that's £6.99. Uh, if the dollar to pound ratio conversion is right, that'll be about ten dollars, I think. Uh, to run through the game in its entirety, it takes about an hour, but it does have replay value as the story is slightly random each time. Like you get different bits of narrative, but we'll, we'll go into that more later. First, like any good PC gamer, we'll take a good look at the options menu, which for the most part is pretty good. So first, audio options, you've got your master volume, speaker configuration, sound quality and captions. It's either full captions or none. I'd recommend going with full captions to play it, just in case you miss some of the speech, because that's kind of the whole point of the game. Uh, you have your master volume. Now, this is my only niggle with this menu. Um, the, the speech and environmental effects can't be controlled separately. And th to be honest, they're balanced pretty well. For the most part, I, I had no problems with it, but I don't know, just be nice to have that extra bit of control, I think. Uh, video settings, got your brightness, aspect ratio, resolution, uh, full screen or windowed, laptop power settings, good if you're on a laptop, I guess. Uh, out and about, travelling, detailed foliage, draw distance, field of view. Now, I don't know what these arrows are above, uh, I don't know if that's like the recommended amount or whatever but I've had no performance issues running everything maxed out and my PCs are okay but it's by no means a beast uh, field of view now it's not what well, is nice to have control over the field of view um, I don't understand their reasoning behind not telling us the actual angle that you're using because I think most PC gamers do have a preferred FOV for gaming like I, I personally prefer 90 or 95 perhaps a little bit higher if I'm on a first person shooter but at maxed it seems to be perhaps a little bit harder than 90 but um, it is quite hard to tell so advanced video got anti-aliasing anti uh, anti-isotropic filtering filtering oh god that was poorly said poorly said v-sync what we call rendering shade detail effect detail model texture pageable memory so yeah, with the exception of a few little niggles, the uh, menu is pretty good. You can rebind the controls as well. You've got mouse acceleration, all that kind of stuff. Um, the only reason I could see that you'd want to rebind the keys is if you're left-handed, because it's all pretty basic. It's WASD for movement and mouse 1 to zoom in, and that is it. Everything else is context-sensitive within the game, which I'll explain more later as well. Controller support as well, which I suppose is good if you like to use a controller. Uh, it's not exactly a fast paced frantic game so I wouldn't see the problem with using a controller. It might be quite nice for a laid back experience. Okay so if you just go to start um, I'm going to try to keep this as spoiler free as possible so I'll just walk you around the start little area. See there's four chapters you only start with the lighthouse unlocked and as you play through the game you unlock the others. I have played through this entire game once and I will upload that onto my channel as well. It's about an hour long. Um, so if you're £6, you're not getting a whole lot if you're only going to play it once. But it does have replay value. Uh, when you first start the game, you'll have someone speaking. Which is either you, from what I can tell, or uh, a letter, or something like that. And as you explore and find different set pieces in the environment, you'll be getting new bits of the story revealed. But what that story is may change depending uh, on your playthrough. So it is de it's definitely worth replaying. I think I will at some point. It's just something that you can do in an afternoon when you're bored or on a rainy day. So without further ado, I'll just jump into the lighthouse so you can get a sense of how the game works. Loading. Unfortunately, I'm not running this off an SSD. Uh, the loading times aren't that bad. It was actually a bit quicker uh, when I was playing before, as you'll see. Uh, if you decide to watch my full playthrough, 
I'll shut up now so you can hear speaking. Dear Esther, the morning after I was washed ashore, salt in my ears, sand in my mouth, and the waves always at my ankles, I felt as though everything had conspired to this one last shipwreck. I remembered nothing but water, stones in my belly and my shoes, threatening to drag me under to where only the most listless of creatures swim. Now, of the three times I've started this game, I've had three different bits of speech at the start. So it does make quite a big difference. Okay, so this is your walking speed. You will walk at this speed throughout the entire game. You cannot run. Uh, there is no way to accelerate your movement aside from maybe following um, a current of water. If you hold left mouse in, you'll zoom in like that. It's not a massive difference to be honest. But I don't know, sometimes it's nice for looking at some distant things. Uh, this is on Source Engine and it is rather beautiful I'm quite impressed with what they've pulled off uh, you can swim as well it does come into the game a little bit can't swim in that water <laughs> this is a bit of a poor example uh, and when you go into dark places you'll have a torch automatically come on just so uh, you can see it looks quite nice and see that yeah, I was right. In my full playthrough, you'll, if you watch, you'll see this. There was a map there. Uh, there was ah, there was that book there. There was another book here. So it's not just the story that changes. The scenery changes as well. So I assume you deduce different things. That was there last time. The Hodge Carbon written on the wall. Don't know why. Uh, now what? What I will say about the movement is, well, you do move slow. To be honest, it does feel like, oh, bird. To be honest, it does feel like the environments are detailed enough that it doesn't feel like too much of a slog. Well, I'll just show you how you would encounter more of the narrative, because I believe that there's a bit up here. Do 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 do, walking up a hill, walking up a hill, looking out over the ocean. I had a good time playing it, and I do feel it is worth the £6, the, well, £6.99. Uh, I mean, value is subjective. If you're looking for an action-packed title, then obviously Donnelly this is going to be for you. The Legend of the Hermit, a holy man who sought solitude in its most pure form. Allegedly, he rode here from the mainland in a boat without a bottom, so all the creatures of the sea could rise at night to converse with him. How disappointed he must have been with their chatter. Perhaps now, in all that haunts the ocean, is the rubbish dumped from the tankers, he'd find more peace. They say he threw his arms wide in a valley on the south side, and the cliff opened up to provide him shelter. They say he died of fever 116 years later. The shepherds left gifts for him at the mouth of the cave, but Donnelly records they never claimed to have seen him. I have visited the cave, and I have left my gifts, but like them, I appear to be an unworthy subject of his solitude. And that is how you uncover more of the narrative. It's simple as that, just walking around through exploration. Uh, like I said, if you want more of an example, there's a uh, more full playthrough available. But for now, I believe this is it, and I think this is a good showcase of all the features available in the game. Uh, as for if you think if it's worth your money, I think that's sort of... Uh, for you to decide. I personally think it is and I will be replaying the game. So this has been Harvey from Who Knows Gaming. If you've enjoyed this video, if it's helped you, leave a like and or subscribe. And if you didn't, then don't. Goodbye.